from Cornwall to Birmingham and Johnston and Bexhill. Here's Ribbon, Spire on the Radio. Hello to um, Zoe Gilby. How are you today? I'm great, thanks, Ruben. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, chat to you today. So, can you tell me, how long have you been a solo, solo artist? Oh, I've been singing professionally now since about ooh, 2006. Um, kind of going out under my own name, working in different jazz clubs. Sort of put my band together kind of officially, I would say, like a couple of years later, but toured under my own name, so basically called it the Zoe Gilby Quartet or the Zoe Gilby Trio, depending on the lineup. And we would perform and still do perform quite a lot around the Northeast and the UK, and then eventually start performing quite a bit abroad. So, yeah, it's, it's been a little while now. <laughs> so, um, what's it like going into the recording studio being a solo artist? Oh, I've I've always enjoyed the recording studio. Actually, I think a lot of, it is daunting. I think it you know it is a bit scary. It is a bit intimidating. But I think as long as you're prepared for what you need to do, uh, you're not so worried about clock watching and you know getting things done. I think even if you know the songs inside out and you know what you're singing, you know what you're doing, still have the lyrics with you. Just have things there just as a backup, just in case you know you do get kind of a bit rabbit in the headlights with it. But I've always enjoyed the recording studio environment. I quite, I quite like, there's a certain amount of pressure there, but, you know, you can do another take as well, worst case scenario. Um, but the beauty now of what I have set up with my husband, Andy, is we have our own little home studio in our house. So it means we can kind of, yeah, just record at our leisure so you're not under pressure so much with, you know, basically how much things are going to cost hour after hour as you're recording in the studio. I guess it's cheaper doing it from home than going to a normal studio, I guess. Yeah, it is. I mean, the expensive bit is setting up the studio in your house. So you've got to initially put the outlay for that, but you can build that gradually and you can upgrade things. Um, and there's so many kind of options now where you can buy stuff online and you can do your own plugins, do your own thing. It's the home studio setup is getting more and more popular and more and more realistic, I think, for people to use to record. It's quite easy now to put up on the on the um, streaming sites, isn't it? It's quite easy now. Yeah, it is, which is, you know, a double-edged sword. It's brilliant. It means you can just quite easily put your music out there, but it means that the, the market is also saturated with a lot of great music. So it's good in some ways, but it means you've got to kind of shout a little bit louder to get heard over the yeah. other people. But I think the important thing is to support each other as well, certainly in the same genres of music or even different genres of music, just try and support each other, follow each other's music and um, follow each other's progress and, and yeah, just generally be supportive. Don't sort of look on it as kind of direct competition, but yeah, it's brilliant. You can easily put stuff out there. So can you tell you more about um, your debut album that released back in 2010 called um, Looking Class? Yes. So uh, that was actually my second album. Um, that I released in 2010, Looking Glass, and that was uh, recorded with a small local record label kind of back in it, and that was in a recording studio where we travelled there for two days and we were there for the full two days recording. And it was brilliant. I, I, again, I really enjoyed the experience, but we were really well rehearsed. I really knew what I, what I wanted, how I wanted it to sound, what the arrangements were going to be like. I knew the songs inside out, like the back of my hand, but just went in there totally prepared. And I found kind of doing that album meant it gave me something that I could obviously give to promoters to give as a promotional tool for gigs, but also it's something that, you know, audience members can buy on gigs as well when they've heard you perform your music. It's like they want to buy the CD, that kind of thing. Um, but it really gets you to kind of up your game when you've got to go in the recording studio because you can't fluff your way through it. You've got to know what you're doing before you go in. So, um, I guess 12 Stories was your debut album then? 12 Stories was my third album. Third, okay. So that was, yeah, so that was the next one, which has got more of the original stuff on that um, that we do. Um, so that was like a different step again. But again, it was in the recording studio. We didn't do this in the home studio. We did this in the recording studio. And a similar process, did it in the two days. It was really well rehearsed in the lead up to it. So we knew we could just go in. And, and nail it basically 
Um, and we love that album. We still perform a lot of tunes off that album as well, even even on concerts now, and still people are wanting copies of it. So it's done something right. <laughs> so um, what is your debut album called then? So the new album that we have out with Living in Shadows, which is going to be released um, on the 7th of June, is called Neon Burning. And that's a collection of all original material, which does kind of encompass some of our jazz background, but I think really is more in the direction of like the prog rock, alternate pop kind of sound as well. Both my husband and I are really influenced by so many different types of genres of music, but we were starting to write a lot of our own stuff. And as it was progressing, it was sounding less and less sort of straight ahead jazz. And it just had other connotations to it, it had other avenues that we could go down with it. So it was kind of during lockdown, really, we started having a bit of fun with it because all the gigs had dried up. Um, and we just thought, let's let's just do an album. Let's let's go for it. Let's record these tunes. Um, and we released that album during lockdown, which was called Living in Shadows. Uh, and it went down pretty well. We just went out, streamed it, and we did do some CDs, but we never performed it live. Um, and then when lockdown lifted, we kind of like went back to our jazz careers, if you like, and started performing all the jazz stuff again. Uh, and I guess because it was, we'd put quite a bit of effort into the production of it. It meant it was a little bit more challenging to maybe try and perform live. But then as we continued writing more and more music, it became apparent that this is clearly creatively the direction that we're going in. So it seemed to make sense. Well, we need to just record another album of this and actually then look to perform it live. So we recorded these eight tracks for Neon Burning um, and we're rehearsing them with a live band ready to go out to perform, which we're hoping will happen later on in the year, maybe September time. So uh, can you tell me more about your, your new single uh, called uh, Castaway? Yes, so our new single is going to be out this Friday, which is the 3rd of May, and that's going to be released um, on Bandcamp, on Spotify, on all, on all platforms for people to stream and download. Um, and the idea for this came about lyrically about kind of encouraging somebody to take chances and take risks in life. Um, I think there's a lot of people who have a lot of potential, but I think that confidence lets them down and stops them from going for stuff. Um, and I think kind of as you get older, you start to realise, yeah, you've got you've got to take these opportunities. So it's very much from a supportive voice, encouraging somebody to, to take chances, to take risks. Um, and we'd, we recorded a music video for it as well and to kind of portray that, we have like an artist in an artist studio standing there in front of a blank canvas, ready to do something on the blank canvas. And I'm kind of singing at them to like spur them on to do it. And then we have a writer sitting at a typewriter thinking about, you know, starting to write the first few lines of their book. And again, that's like kind of sitting there nervous, don't know how to do it. And it's like, no, go for it. Like you've got to, you've got to seize it. If you've got that idea, if you've got that premise, you've got to go for it, which I think, Internally, when you think about it, it was kind of how Andy and I were thinking about living in shadows, really. It was like, I think we've got to run with this. We've got to do it. So we kind of wrote a song about it. Maybe it's telling ourselves <laughs> to do this as well. Um, and it features uh, our guitarist, Mark Williams. Um, and it's been produced by Chris Sharkey. And it will be released on Lamplight Social Records as well. So they're going to be releasing it and help plug it also but it'll be out on Bandcamp ready to stream. So um so we've got any um gigs coming up? Yeah so the next gig I have is in Bradford on Friday with my uh, jazz quartet. Um so that'll be lovely. That's um Jazz at the Priestley which is a fantastic jazz club that we haven't performed at for a number of years. Um but I will be dropping heavy hints around the Living in Shadows stuff because I think there will be a crossover audience between the jazz stuff and the you know and the living in shadows stuff and then after that we have a lovely gig at a nice little jazz club in crook um which is a lo lovely little part of county durham and that always gets a really nice crowd in there and really sitting listening into it and again i'll be doing a bit of a plug for living in shadows as well so um how is it being an independent artist for you sorry what was that Ruben? you just um, What's it like being an independent artist? It's it's great. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, there's a few things I would change <laughs> about it in that it is it is quite hard. It is quite challenging. Um, 
you have to do a lot of legwork yourself. I don't have any official management that covers me or any agent. I'll get all my own work. Um, so in some respects, that does make it harder. As I say, there's a lot more work. But in, in some ways, it gives you more control over things so I can decide what I'm doing. Certainly when it comes to like booking agents or booking directly through the promoter, they're speaking to me directly. So there's no mistakes. There's no kind of middleman that can potentially get in the way um, and maybe, you know, get information wrong, I suppose. So it's very rewarding. I think when it's your own thing as well, it's like your own child, I guess. It's your own baby. It's It means so much to you. Um, but it's full time. It's a, like it's 24 hours a day. It doesn't stop. You're just constantly emailing people, practicing, recording, writing, keeping on top of social media. It's it is nonstop. So, but it's I love it though. I wouldn't I wouldn't actually change it for the world. <laughs> so uh, finally, uh, can you tell my listeners um, where can I find uh, Living in the Shadows on your social media? Yeah, so Living in Shadows, we are on um, Instagram and we are on Facebook and we are on Twitter. We're also on Bandcamp and that's where the single is going to be released and the album will be released as well. And you can buy that on CD. So if you look at livinginshadows.bandcamp.com, that's where you'll be able to directly stream and download the music. We also have a little website as well set up, which is just livinginshadows.com. So you can kind of keep up to date with that. But definitely you can follow us, as I say, on Facebook, on Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, thank you. Let me check to you today. Sorry, what was that? Woman? I said, thank you. Let me check to you today. Oh, it's been lovely to chat with you too. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. I will do. Same with you. Goodbye. Bye bye now. Bye bye. See you.